Imagine what it would be like to live right next door to a zoo. Do you like animals? Do you like fun adventures? How about animals going on fun adventures? If you said yes to any of these, then you might be interested in the author that we're talking about today. Today we're discussing Arnold Lobel and his life works. Come along with me as we learn today all about Arnold Lobel and some of his many books. Arnold Lobel was born in 1933 in California. While Arnold was still an infant, his parents, Lucille and Joseph Lobel, moved their family to New York. While growing up in New York, Arnold had a pretty tough time. As a young kid, he got sick a lot, so he spent a lot of time alone in his room, writing stories and drawing pictures. He himself said that he probably didn't make the best choices as a young kid to be alone, but it's probably why he has so many of the works that he has today. His books are very much based on his own experiences and his life. As Lobel grew up, he continued to love drawing so much that he even went to college for it. He went to the Pratt Institute in New York, and that's where he met his soon-to-be wife, Anita. Anita Kemplar was also an illustrator and a storyteller. She wrote her own books later on in life as well. Let's take a look at some of Arnold Lobel's books. Arnold Lobel's work had many influences, but you might see an easy connection here. Lobel and his family lived across from the Prospect Park Zoo in Brooklyn for most of his life. He drew great inspiration from the animals the family could see from their window. In fact, during a sprained ankle injury, Lobel spent his recovery time in front of their window, creating his Caldecott award-winning book, Fables. Fables are short stories that include a moral. A moral is a lesson that a character has to learn before the end of the story. In Arnold Lobel's Fables, he has 28 different stories that all have a lesson. In one of my favorite fables, The Cat and His Visions, this little cat has great, great visions of a fishy, fishy feast while fishing, but they gradually get tired as time goes on without even one bite from his hook. You'll have to read Arnold Lobel's Fables to find out what the moral is to this story. Now let's talk about one of my favorite books by Arnold Lobel, Frog and Toad. The Frog and Toad series is a set of four books containing five stories each. In each story, we follow Frog and Toad as they go on many various adventures. Let me properly introduce our friends. All right, so here is Frog. Frog is the taller, green fella. He tends to be more relaxed and cheerful, very carefree in spirit, and he really, really loves being a frog, and he really loves being Toad's friend. And then we have Toad. Toad is the smaller, more brown, toady looking friend. He is a bit more uptight than Frog, but he really cares about his friend Frog. And as you read through those awesome stories, you will see how our two buddies uh, work really well together and how they really have a good time together as they walk through the different ways of being a friend. I'm just going to put you there, right over here. Comfy, cozy. Oh yeah. Now, of course, one of my favorite places to start in the Frog and Toad series is with Top Frog and Toad, our friends. This, of course, features five different stories, like all of the Frog and Toad books. Um, and my favorite from this book is called The Letter. It's the last story in um, Frog and Toad Are Friends. And The Letter is all about how Little Toad is waiting for someone to send him a letter. He has a mailbox outside of his house, and he keeps waiting and waiting, and no one seems to want to send him a letter. But then, of course, his friend Frog comes along, and Frog is just so excited about sending Toad a letter that he hands the letter to a snail. Now, we all know about snail mail and how slow that can be, so we'll have to read the book to figure out just whether or not that letter got back to Toad, huh? 
In addition to Frog and Toad, Lobel also published works like Mouse Soup, the story of a mouse who has to use his smarts to keep a weasel from turning him into Mouse Soup, On Market Street, which was written by Lobel and illustrated by his wife Anita. It is all about a boy who travels down Market Street and buys presents going from A to Z. And Pigrix, another fun animal-themed book, a collection of 38 limericks, which are these silly rhyming poems, all centered around pigs. These pigs are sailors, artists, butterfly collectors, singers, and mischief makers. All of Arnold Lobel's works are still widely available. You can find these stories in your classrooms, in your libraries, and in bookstores all over. So if you like animal tales and fun adventures or cozy stories, these might be the books for you. There's about 80 different books that this uh, man wrote and illustrated all on his own, as well as several others that he collaborated with other people on. Uh, he contributed greatly to the world of early children's books, and his pictures and stories are still very beloved today. So get yourself a copy of one of my favorite books, Frog and Toad are Friends, or check out any of the other titles that I've mentioned here today. Thank you for coming and learning with me today. I hope you enjoyed learning a little more about Arnold Lobel and his life and his life works. I hope uh, I have inspired you to pick up your own copy of Frog and Toad. There are again four books in the series with five stories each, so plenty there to read and learn, uh, as well as his many, many other life's works. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.